So this is Mark Benetoff from WordPress Academy. Uh, in this 12-minute um, uh, video, I'm going to give you a complete introduction to the uh, Paint.net, very powerful free graphics editor. Uh, this is a series that includes the, uh, I'm going to demonstrate the GIMP, G-I-N-P, which is another excellent free program um, that is a bit more powerful than Paint, but also a bit harder to use. And uh, we're also going to uh, demonstrate Pixlr, P-I-X-L-R. Uh, which is an online program that uh, accomplishes the same thing. Thanks. All right, so here's paint.net. Um, you're going to want to make sure that the tools window is visible and the colors window, which is this one, and the layers window. The history window we don't really need. Close that off. Um, if any of these windows are not visible, just um, pull, pull down and enable them uh, from, the, uh, from the Windows menu. Um, on the right here is the image that we're working on. So uh, you could either delete that and start fresh, but let's just uh, resize this image, resize uh, canvas size, it's called, to the uh, dimension of the image that we want to create. So we're going to do a header of um, uh, 940 by 175 pixel. This, if you're if you're if you're creating a WordPress header, uh, your theme vendor or theme documentation is going to tell you what size you're going to need. So here we are, and uh, let's open up the Swan image now. One big dot JPEG. Okay, now this is a pretty big image. Uh, you can see on the bottom here the size of the image here, 3700 by 2254, quite big. So let's start by taking a cropping uh, section of this that we're going to put on our header to the left here, something like that, and then image crop the selection. Okay, and then we're going to uh, resize that to fit. Uh, vertically uh, on the header, so uh, just uh, and check check that. Uh, make sure that maintain aspect ratio is set, and change the height to 175. And uh, notice also now the size of the image is, um, has been uh, modified down here on the right. And we're going to select all and copy. Then we're going to reselect our canvas, which is going to be our header, and we're going to paste in to new layer. And watch the window, watch the layers window on the right as I do this. Okay, it's created this new layer. I'm going to rename that layer by clicking on it and calling it Swan, just to keep everything clean. Um, and uh, notice that I can unselect, uh, make, uh, not, not unselect, but make any of these layers not visible also. If I um, take out the background layer, you notice that the swan is only about um, uh, about 180 pixels wide, and uh, for the rest it's got transparent pixels, which is this sort of check mark area. And the uh, resulting image is going to show from, top, from, in, from the top to bottom layers um, and the top layers are going to obscure, obscure the bottom layers uh, unless the top layers have transparent pixels. So in this case, this one has trans transparent pixels to the right, so it's um, not obscuring the background layer. Okay, so let's um, actually let's uh, unselect, let's unshow the swan layer, and let's select the background layer. Uh, uh, let's clear out the background layer. Select the tools. To select the the, um, the the the. the the selection tool, select it all, drag it, drop, and then delete. So now the background layer is all transparent. Um, let me select this one. I want to pick up a color, maybe like sort of this dark blue color. I'm going to use the what's called the color picker, which is this uh, right icon right here. And I'm going to click on here and watch the color window as I do that, because as I click, um, actually, you see that? There's a problem. Just select the swan layer. And the layers, and then click on the on the color. Click set the, set the color picker tool to click on this uh, dark blue area, and watch the primary color here get set. Now the primary color is the top left box, and the secondary color is, is the bottom right box. The primary color is the, is the drawing tool of most text tools, and the back and the secondary color is the um, the secondary color is usually, usually the background color of um, of most of the text tools. Okay, so. Um, now we've set the primary color and we can paint bucket in that background. So select the background and use the paint bucket tool here. All right. Um, I'm going to show you how to do a gradient instead of a paint bucket later. It's, we'll make it a little, bit, a little bit more professional. Okay, so here we are. 
And uh, now let's go ahead and add a new layer for the text. Always put your text, and in fact, put anything, everything on new layers. I'm going to call this uh, text. And you can also reorder layers by uh, moving them up. So we want the text layer to be on top of everything here. Not, not that it's going to make a difference in this case, because the text layer is to the right of the swan. Um, and then use the text tool. You're going to want to set the primary color to white, so this little button here, this little arrow button, will reverse the primary and the secondary color. And then you can just start uh, typing. Now, the fonts that um, are available are the fonts that are installed on your computer. Um, you can get uh, additional fonts by, uh, there's a bunch of free fonts available on the web, and then you can just get the, what's called the TTF file and drop it into your fonts directory. Um, but for now, let's use, just choose Arial and you're going to select the um, the size that you want that looks maybe just a little bit bigger you're not limited to the sizes that are here you can also type in the size okay and you can move it up a little bit and then uh, freeze it in place just by selecting any tool so the selection tool okay um, and then maybe do the same let's draw a horizontal line use this line tool here something like that freeze it in place Make sure you're drawing on the text layer here. We may want to put the horizontal line on another layer. It's up to you. Um, another text tool. Click here. Best swan headers on the net. Um, let's maybe make it a little smaller. And let's make it italic. OK, and then freeze it in place. OK. Now, um, I'm going to show you uh, how to do a gradient um, which uh, what's called a transparency gradient, which makes images fade into the other. So let's make this um, swan image fade into the um, into the background here. So what you're going to do is just for clarity, let's um, unvisible the text and the background, and then you're going to select the gradient tool, which is um, this here looks like a little TV with a blue line through it, and you're going to select the mode of the gradient tool. Uh, this Top, uh, this top line here is, is sort of context sensitive, depends on the, um, on the tool that you're using. Select the, um, uh, the linear gradient on the left, that's by default, but the down, um, uh, this, this little color palette, so you're going to select the transparency mode. All right, and what we're going to do now is we're going to make uh, parts of this, uh, we're going to make the right side of this swan layer more and more transparent so that it fades into the background. So basically put your cursor right there and then drag to the right, something like that. And you can actually, you see the little handles there, you can make them, you can move them. And then just freeze it in place by hitting the, um, the select tool. Okay, and then when you see, when we re-enable the background, you'll see now that that image fades into the background, okay? So let me show you something um, else that that'd be kind of cool. Just uh, it's called it's it's also called uh, it's called a color gradient as opposed to a transparency gradient. So once again, select the gradient tool. Let's um, unvisible everything and select the background. Let's clear out the background because we're going to do a color gradient instead of that plain white background. And let's uh, select um, a color a color gradient goes from the primary to the secondary color. So let's. Um, make that primary color a little bit darker here uh, using this V that's um, okay and then let's copy that hex color and let's select the secondary color and paste in that hex color and this time we're going to make it a little um, okay that didn't work for some reason let me try that again Copy that, select the secondary color, paste it in. Okay, better. And now we can make the um, the secondary color maybe a little lighter, something like that. Yeah, that works. And um, then basically um, select the gradient tool again. And this, in this case, we're going to select the color gradient. Okay, move your cursor to the top and pull it down, and you'll see it kind of creates a nice color gradient. And um, you can you can move the the select the handles back and forth to get to to to, to give it more, and more you know to position the gradient and then just freeze it in place, and then let's see what it looks like by enabling the other layers. Okay, how does that? 
So um, obviously you could put more images. Um, the, uh, the text effects in paint.net uh, are not the best. Um, some of the other tools like GIMP or uh, Pixlr have nice sh uh, drop shadows and um, other things that you could do with the text. Um, there is a, uh, a drop shadow that you can add in as a plugin to paint.net. You just search for a paint.net drop shadow. But let's go ahead and save this file now um, in its native format, which is a um, uh, PDN file. This is the, this is this has all the layers in it. Okay, so you're going to save that in case you want to later come back and make modifications to this file. And if you're publishing this to the web, like if you're making a header, you're also going to want to save it as a JPEG. Save it as a JPEG. And it's going to give you a dialog. It's going to ask you to choose the um, uh, the compression settings. Uh, basically, um, the, the, the more compressed, the, uh, the the less quality image you, you start to see artifacts. Okay, whereas the the low the low compression the, it increases the file size. So in this case, uh, even at the lowest, even at the the, the the lowest compression, it's still 60 kilobytes, which is quite acceptable for a header. So this would be fine. But I'm just going to use a default that gives a file size of 30 uh, kilobytes, which is perfectly acceptable. And you save that. Uh, it's going to ask you whether you want to flatten it, and yes, you are going to want to flatten it. All right, and that would be the image that you would upload as your header image.